the best way that I found to really be able to scale your business is to be able to create a repeatable process that you can actually have somebody else repeat for you. Perfect, man. So thanks for, you know, having me on today. And I guess, um, just tell me a little bit. I read like, uh, you know, what you wrote on there, but you know, let's just, I got to kick it off. Tell me a little bit about yourself what you got going on. Yeah. Awesome. So right now, like I'm running my own little solopreneur video agency. Uh, I'm starting to, what is it? I'm doing a little bit above break even at the moment. What's how much is that? Okay. So right now I'm averaging about two grand in expenses and I'm averaging somewhere between every month, three to six grand in turnover. Okay. So, so, you're, so you're more than breaking even. Yeah, more right. than break even. It's taken me a while to get there though as well. Like I've been doing this for about two years now. So just slogging through eating beans and rice to make it work till I figure it out. And the biggest thing that's coming up for me at the moment is like the amount of time I'm spending on each video. So whether I'm going like, I don't know if I'm going overboard or putting too much time and effort into videos or if my if I'm not being efficient enough. I feel like, you know, one of the things that's missing in my experience is that I've just started by myself. I've never like worked in a studio environment. So I don't know what I don't know. And so just like understanding more about what's industry standard and what I should be charging for what I am or like how would I and like also just going through processes and understanding is what I'm doing efficient um like I just started listening to you your YouTube channel for the first time last week and I got a little bit about how you said you experimented with Fiverr people and I was like oh that's a great idea so probably finding more stuff like that and that's my rant (laughs) yeah Fiverr people are definitely a hit or a miss um I've had I had better luck with Fiverr people with doing like animations and uh like photo editing for video editing i've like had one guy that did a decent job but it was for like a 30 second hotel promo that like every single shot was like beautifully shot so it was like very easy for them not to mess up so that's what i found as well editors i couldn't get to work yeah the best editors i found have actually been over in the philippines and the way i've done this is that I go to Facebook groups for uh, like VA Filipinos and then I join those groups and I make job posts inside of there. And mm-hmm. I just start um, like, I have a whole process and that process usually goes like, I'll have them fill out a form and actually I'll have my sister send this to you. Um, for, awesome. Yeah, so I have a form that goes over like, hey, what's your speed test? Like give me samples of your work, all these different things to kind of, cause you're gonna get like, a bunch of people they're gonna sign up. I like seventy five percent of them won't be good, but somewhere in there, there's twenty five percent. You have somebody that'll be, that'll be decent. Uh, so the best way I found to do that is while I'm when I'm working on a video project, I I started recording myself editing that project, and I'd be like, hey, okay, so this is well, I'm looking at the shot. This is what I'm looking for. This is why I made the cut here. They like I I really get as much detail as possible into my thought process when i when that video is done recording what i've done now is i'll hire one of those uh one of those va workers and i was like hey make me a training video off this pretty much training video that i shot like make, make me a training video from this training video <laughs> I so, love that. so from that i would then the next project and be like hey we like oh and then you see how they work you kind of get an idea and then from there the next project that I have like that, I'm like, hey, I want you to do this this project. So you kind of work them into like your process and the way you do things. So at that point, you need to figure out and kind of have an understanding of like, okay, how long does it take me to do a project or edit a project? So like here, like on our projects, like I know that for like a one minute, like for every one minute of talking head, it's about five hours of editing. All right. But that's that's what we average out at. Some some things are faster, some things a little bit slower, but I, I know that like for, you know, like I said, with every one minute, so like if I'm looking at a two minute video, it's gonna be minimum of 10 hours. It could be anywhere between 10 and 15 hours to do that. And just so you have an understanding of like, okay, where's the time frame, And then like that we need to work with it. So when you're making these training guides and SOPs, they know where they need to be at. Cause like I, earlier I had another guy that I hired overseas and he was like, oh, I spent four hours connecting 
proxies manually. I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, there's literally like a feature in Premiere that you like connect proxies. And he's like, well, I didn't know about that. So then like the next thing he's like, oh, he charged me for two hours of learning Premiere Pro. And I was like, dude, we're not doing this. I was like, uh, I was like, I like your work, but like I asked you if you know these things. You told me yes. I'm spent six hours for you to learn Premiere Pro. I was like, this is not where like this is not how it works. Oh, right. Um, and so you you charge them that you say so you do hourly rates with them and like I've been doing contracts with most editors, but alley is a good way to go. So I would say so right now the way I've done it, the way that I'm doing it now is I'm telling them to give me a quote on per project. So I'm like, hey, I'll upload all the files, I'll create proxies for everything. And I'll be like, hey, look at this Google Drive folder, review the footage. So you have mm -hmm. an idea of what you're working with and then give me a quote on what it'd be like to create a two minute video for this. So like this last project, um, I just had the editor turn in a project today. It's like a two minute video. He charged me $180 to edit the whole project for me. So for me, it makes yeah. sense. Cause like the, even the project wasn't, it wasn't that profitable, but it was like a, a video I did for a nonprofit organization. So mm -hmm. it was like, they had like a 1500 dollar budget and like we filmed for like three hours so like 1500 bucks give them 200 you know and then i paid the uh, second shooter like 300 dollars. So, like i made a thousand dollars in a small period of time so like, i'm cool with that mm. but and then i've had other projects where he'd, he'd be like oh like a hundred dollars for your edit this or like 50 bucks because most of the average what i've seen with uh vas overseas when it comes to editing on the lower end of things you're going to be paying like five bucks an hour on the higher end of things is going to be between eight to ten dollars an hour um yeah. What I've, the other thing that's been really useful for me is if I'm not hiring somebody that's really good and I'm getting somebody around the five minutes, like the $5 an hour, what I have them do is just scrub the footage for me. So like I'll go in, I'll create the project and then actually I'll pull one up right now. So you kind of get an idea. So what I, I came in. I, and I can literally set up the project for them. So like I have like I created my three main folders, which I do my media sequences and assets. And then in my media, I have like, you know, my Sony camera, the other sh the other shooter's camera, the other guy's camera, audio drone, I name everything and I put audio recording. And then with these, I created proxies for everything and I renamed everything. So like there's no mix ups because especially with Sony, a lot of them, I don't know what you're shooting with. It would be like, you know, zero, zero, 001. And then two cameras have zero, zero, 001 and you disconnect the hard drive and you try to connect you there's no guarantee oh. that like that's going to connect again. like i've been through like hell having to rebuild little projects so now whenever i get a new project the first thing i do i rename everything to be like a custom name so it's like you know this is passion of hope a73 rodrigo and this guy was so when you so when you rename it is it something to auto rename them so they all get the yeah I just, I just yeah so literally all i do is um like i'll go on the project here i will uh so like all i needed to do, i'm not going to do this one because i created proxies but i'll so i'll remove all the xlm files normally so these like extra files i'll take these out of here and i'll just literally oh, i can't just, see anything oh uh, I gotta share. Uh, let me see, share so like on the folder here I'll remove all the XML files out of this. I didn't do it for this one because I only had one camera in the shoot. So mm -hmm. I, I didn't do it for this project, but I'll literally just come in, right click them all and I'll put rename and then I'll type whatever it is. And then it'll literally, it'll just go in and it'll, it'll just rename it in order. All right. Yeah. Um, and then the, this works for window and uh, for um, Mac as well. So mm -hmm. I'll go in, I set all this up like all the different files everything that we need on here and then i create sequences as well so i tell them i was like hey this is a sequence for quinn's camera this is a sequence for my camera that's josh's camera these are your drone so and these right now are just select so pretty much what i want them to do is you're going to go through every single clip in that folder for me and you're going to find me all the best shots and you're going to put all those best shots in one timeline and you're going to do that for every single camera and then when that's done, you can put together the rough draft. So if I need to come in and anything happens, I can just go through the best clips and already have a rough draft timeline come in here. So if I got to make tweaks or anything like that, like it's all here. It makes my job a lot easier. So even if they're not editing, like giving me the final edit, at least like me and I haven't because like this is shot between three cameras for me to sit here and go through three hours of footage from three cameras like my like i'm gonna fucking blow my brains out because like i already had to go through the shoot i don't want to have to go through this all over again so if them yep. do that it saves me uh, a lot of time so i'll then create a video which i'll be like hey lester 
this is what I like. I'll literally do like a screen share like this. And be like, okay, this is the first folder. This is where this is that. If you have any questions, let me know. Kind of just walking them through. And then I have another video that um, I give to them that I found from somebody on YouTube that they show you how to work with proxies on somebody else's timeline. So they reconnect the, because I've had another issue of like sending proxies over to people overseas. And then they import the proxies into the project, into the project with that. That turns into a whole other nightmare because <laughs> They're only supposed to connect the proxies so you can work off the proxies, but them importing the proxies and working off the proxy timeline. Premiere thinks that the file size that you're working with is all 720 by 540, whatever. Oh, you yeah. So I went back and I reconnected it and like everything, cause it was like 4k files, everything's like super zoomed in. I was like, holy shit. It's like, so there's a lot of things that you're going to go through in the process of bringing somebody like overseas. But those are just some of the things that I had to go through in the beginning that like, I just didn't know, but you, you learn throughout the process. So that yeah. has helped a lot. Um, so I'm saying that, do you use any particular stuff? to like send them notes is it through google drive or do you use notion or um i'm using dropbox i have dropbox paid version so i just do it everything through there um i when they send me the video because they, they most of them don't have dropbox because it's paid and there's like only a limit of what you could do on there but i have the premium version or dropbox pro where i can upload a video and then put notes on there so they'll send me their video via like google drive i have my sister download it she uploads it to dropbox then i'll just timestamp certain things or like i said i'll do i've gotten better at just doing the screen recording and just telling them like hey at this minute here like i'll literally just stop and give them like verbal notes of like this is where that's at and like i'll do like a verbal like a note like a note recap of like hey these are the clips i reference in the video like clips like i literally had the notes here earlier today because I, I literally just did this i was like hey clip 167 169 i was like looking at the notes and i wrote that i was like hey last sir great job on the first round of edits um i want to let's cut it down to two minutes and let's add clip 167 and 169 at the end her thanking the sponsors and let's get some shots of like the burgers and different things like that and like that's kind of it and i just kind of let them play around with that right gotcha okay so with your current projects um how are you finding clients right now it's literally just been word of mouth and connections okay yeah that's pretty much been it and where are you you're in brisbane brisbane australia yep okay cool so i guess and i know you mentioned this on the forum that you like you like oh i know my website sucks what are you doing about your website um right now i'm just trying to make enough money to pay someone to to change it up or make it better Okay. Uh, I'm not even sure where to go okay. for that, but I'm just figured, I just figured I need more money in the bank first so I can get someone to do it. I, I have a real, I can write really well for, I can write for speaking so I can write scripts really well. Mm -hmm. I cannot write for reading. There's something that just doesn't click in my brain it, or it takes me like, days to do it yeah because the biggest thing that i found because like i actually wanted to look at your work and i saw that you had like a, a demo reel or like a highlight reel playing in the background of your website when i went to go look for that in your website itself like i couldn't find any any of that work um yeah so i think that to me is a big issue as like a business owner that wants to come and hire you like i don't know what you're capable of doing right now because yeah, there's three videos in there and they're like you're kind yeah, of like the yeah. interview stuff like and i didn't know if those yeah. people were like like part of your team that you're interviewing or there was actually clients yeah. so the, there's a lot of misunderstanding on, on what is it yeah. that um that you're actually offered on there now when it comes to the website you don't need a lot of money to have somebody to do your website i don't know how much you're thinking that you needed i don't know like a couple grand or something I mean, you can get a website done for like less than a thousand bucks. You know what I mean? Um, and you don't need anything really complicated. Like you just need like a clean homepage, a place where you can show your videos, a like about us page, and then a contact us page. Like keeping yeah. it very simple. But we need to show your work. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Are you are you in Google My Business? Do people like what do you guys use in like? Yeah, we have a Google My Business in Australia. Uh, I am with them at the moment. Well, we recently had floodings. I recently changed address, so they uh -huh. sent me a letter, and then it flooded, and then the letters got lost. So I got to reset, get that. Oh reset. really? I'm not showing up at the moment. Yeah. Do you have reviews on that listing? Uh, I do. I've got three so far, three, five stars, three or okay. four. Okay. Let's so. work. Let's work on uh, following up with maybe past clients and people that you know you can get reviews from. Yeah. Um. So what kind of projects have you been working on? If you saw my videos, that interview style, it's even, even here. Uh, about two months ago, I stopped doing them. I wasn't really making enough money for what was involved in them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it's a lot of work to write people's stories, essentially, is what that was. Mm -hmm. So now i'm doing more explainer style videos i can share with you the most recent one i've been working on if you like okay so you're 
you said you're writing the scripts for the people for those interviews yep okay so why were you pr particularly writing the scripts so particularly what i found is i had a lot of issue with people being and this was before with um it was more like people getting their personalities out that's what it was was to get the personality behind the brand in front mm -hmm. of the brand um and i found people had a really hard time telling emotionally moving stories so okay. i created a whole process where i would interview them then write their story then film edit and deliver that yeah because that process seems very long and i can see how that you know, they're becoming less cost effective so you ever thought about writing the questions to get them to open up to talk about their stories doing the classic interview style like ask the right questions, film those answers, then edit that together. Yeah, like what's well, something that has worked really well for me was like last year, I started working with a producer and she is really good at talking to people and interviewing them. So finding somebody, specifically a girl, like girls are, I feel like people are like, even if it's another girl or a guy, I feel like if they're a little bit more open to uh, like having a, like a, a better conversation with the girl, that uh, that helped a lot. Cause then I was also able to focus on like making sure that everything else on set was really well done. But I think with you, interviewing them writing the scripts then go back and film that again i feel like that's a, a very long process yeah that that was the main issue there it was an extremely long process and i wasn't able to ever charge it but i was like looking at what would make that viable as a business model it was like it was like eight or nine grand for that video mm -hmm. make it viable and i was just like yeah that it wasn't going to work out most of my clients were looking around that two to three grand price range so and right now that's for most of your clients right you said a two to three thousand dollar range right yeah. so yeah. What would make sense for you on that two to three thousand dollar range to shoot for them? It would probably be um it'd be a one to three minute video depending probably so let's just say two minute video them mm -hmm. sitting down probably with a very simple script like I could, I could happily write a classic intro um gap bridge hook script mm -hmm. and have that filmed and have a little bit of like a visual aid on the side i could happily do that yeah see like what i'm thinking is versus writing the script for people which i think you end up spending a lot more time doing is writing the questions because like the, the best way that I found to really be able to scale your business is to be able to create a repeatable process that you can actually have somebody else repeat for you. The versus you writing scripts, because that would actually take most of your time to actually do anything, is mm -hmm. write a series of questions that will equal to like the storyline of a script that you use. Not I'm not, I'm not sure. What, are you like something? Are you using something like? Have you heard a story brand from Donald, Donald Miller? I think it's been referenced before. Yeah, it's so like he, he has like a popular like nine step structure, and I've used it. Maybe it's seven. I remember now. It's either seven or nine step structure that he uses for this. Uh, for like telling your story. So like being able to recreate something like that, that let's say you're able to hire somebody to go out and shoot for you. And, and the reason I say this is that when you're able to ask the same kind of questions to tell somebody's story when the next thing you get to do is when you shoot that video you're going to get to record that video and you're going to make a training video for that video then you're able to use that training video to be able to give to another editor do yeah. the work for you and because you all the questions are always going to be the same and the structure is always going to be the same it's really going to be easy for you to be able to start creating a machine to just between somebody else even if it's you shooting videos in the beginning until you bring somebody on to help you shoot them and eventually like like then you have a system that you can literally just pitch to people and be like, hey, we have a proven story system that we created and developed to help tell your story in seven easy steps. And it's very, for you, it's very, in a sense, cook cookie cutter that like you have a team behind it that's it would execute the process and you're not spending all this time it's like you versus you writing scripts you're actually doing business development which is the thing that's going to help you know start driving the business for you yeah that, that that's the big thing there i spend so long right now producing the videos and i have i guess semi-processed things but i think i need to take it back to a simpler step mm -hmm. yeah and simpler processes so that it can be repeatable so that makes sense do you have do you have an SOP for these steps? Uh, SOP, sorry, what's that? Uh, standard operation, standard operation procedures. Sort of. So when I say that, as in like I haven't organized it, so I could just hand it to someone. Uh -huh. But it's be between Monday and Notion, those are the two things I've been using to organize those things. Yeah, so I could I could definitely consolidate it and have something up in a day. Put it in a Notion. So like I'll show you what I'm working on right now. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm getting rid of Monday. It's very expensive. It feels good, but it's expensive. Yeah, I have Monday too. I'm like not. There's one that's called the symbol that I've actually spoken to the owner. It's very. They're they're getting better right now for what they're mm -hmm. they're offering. And I like that it's like I think it's like thirty bucks for like unlimited people in your team or something. Like it's something very affordable for what they're offering. So I have. <laughs> 
two different ones and actually okay so this is like one that we're using right now for like setting up your projects of like literally the step by step and this is something i got from my buddy mo on notion mm-hmm. on like how he sets up like out of my is not this way but he just shared his with me on how like your folder is supposed to look like so every time somebody comes in into notion he literally has this on there like hey this is what you're supposed to do all in one place the one i'm working on right now is so right now where i'm doing is I'm actually having them, like, these are all the videos. I like pretty much everything that I use that I found helpful on the internet. I created pretty much a series on here of like, hey, these are the videos that I need you to watch for you to start editing for me. And first, I was going to go in and shoot all these videos. And then literally, I was with Chris uh, this weekend. And he's like, dude, he's like, don't shoot anything. He's like, you just go through your YouTube, look at what you've been, what you looked at and found helpful and create that as kind of as an outline so literally like everything that like i've used like you know why do you use close-ups you know editor's eye like different cuts to drive the story like you know how to fade audio so versus me having to shoot everything i just created pretty much a guide for them as like a first off as like part of their training that i need to do this is this okay to share with it's okay if you can't share that with me but yeah yeah, i I, I can share this one with you good that that, that looks really good and you're right like that's something i started doing as well i was was starting to film a lot of my stuff and then i realized oh i people i'm why don't i just copy and paste the tutorial i looked at first yeah so like because like i'm looking at the time because like i could i could have done all these videos right And these videos have been great for my youtube and that's something else that you know, I'm taking a step back this year, just like being coached by Chris. And he's like, dude, like, look at your times. Like you can either spend your time sitting here and reshooting all these videos or editing all these projects, or you can go out and go make sales calls and go do business development. So you could actually be able to do the things you want to do. But like you sitting here to do videos, like your videos are going to be better than the person that you're trying to copy. He's like, don't even bother trying to redo them right now. Like you don't have the time for that. And I was like, Fair enough. So I started doing like these outlines. So, you know, that, that has helped me a lot. So like all the guys who work for me now, this is like mandatory for them to watch. So right now between two to 3000, do you have any retainer clients? Like, I guess like, what's your, like, what do you have? Yes. What do you have working right now for you? Uh, right now my retainer clients, I I've got two things. One of them's about to end at the end of this month, I think, but it was, it was about one, it was $1,900. How'd you get um, them? And change a month. How did you get so them as a client? One of them was a, an employee. And then they basically put me on a, um, like retainer basis to help them with video editing later on, just mm-hmm. like as technical stuff. And the other one is, this is really random, but, uh, she originally hired me to help create the process for like some internal videos in her company. And then I've pretty much been put on as tech support. So yeah. You know, she gets probably about one or two hours a day with me. And it's literally, because she's not very computer literate, but I'm yeah. also, I've got a very empathetic way of working with people. I never make people wrong. So I was mm-hmm. able to just like, I put a, like a, um, a team view on her thing. So whenever she has a problem, she texts me, I fix the problem and I send her a video explaining what was happening. That's actually very interesting that you, you say that because I have a buddy of mine here. He's building this platform called Carol. And that's mm. literally all he does is focusing He's like building an app for it. He's helping like the older, like I guess to call it like baby boomers here with tech problems because like it is such a, a big market and like that's something that you might that you might be really good at you know that's not a bad idea for something that you might want to pursue because like the ocean or like what i call it blue ocean red ocean like it's a very blue ocean in a sense of like there's not going to be a lot of people that are competing against you and it wouldn't be really hard for you to like i mean at least here in america we have a bunch of like old retirement homes where like we know the communities of where the the old people are at so um Mm -hmm. kind of creating i mean like i said i don't necessarily know exactly you know what what you want to do in in the process of like i talked to some people that like they want to be videographers and dps and i talked to the people that like i want to be entrepreneur and like video is just the way that i go about it so like what what do you see yourself doing? It's probably, it's like a very weirdly like scary thought in my head to jump away from video. And this is like, I've got to be careful of because I don't want to be like, I don't want to be in video just because I've been in it for so long. Mm-hmm. I've been doing video now for nine years or something. 
I think mm-hmm. it started off with wanting to, you know, break the classic Hollywood industry. And then I didn't like, I, I didn't like the culture around that. So I moved into the marketing world and I found that culture be much more fun. In terms of what do I want to do? Uh, I'll give you my ultimate dream in the end, actually. So my dream in the end is I want to own a studio with about 12 to 30 employees. So pretty big. And I want it to actually be two things. So I want it to be growing through like creating marketing videos and all that. But when it gets big enough, I want to eventually split it and have part of it working on streaming services like Netflix and half of it working on marketing. And that's kind of like in this world, you know, when another pandemic hits, Uh I can kind of switch the company to like focus on streaming services because... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know they go up while the pandemic comes up so the idea is it's like not putting all your eggs in one basket in this one business do you know an agency that's doing that currently in brisbane not in brisbane i know i, I know of agencies that have like this but but i've never really looked into it that deeply well then i want to invite you uh, i'll tell you some of the best things like i've learned to grow my agency from is by going to work for someone that's doing exactly what I want to do. That is really going to allow you to excel and learn. If you're like a fast visual learner, it's one of those things that will put you in a position to grow a lot faster. So for you, I'll be looking because you mentioned about like, you know, not working for a bigger company and things like that, being in bigger sets, get yourself involved on some bigger sets. Like, you know, I've ended up volunteering at a, like music video I ended up getting to shoot with like a red with like a ninety thousand dollar lens on it i saw how they're doing their like shot list things like i never thought about and even like tuesday Wednesday and Thursday this week here for me, I'm working on a set as a DIT, which I didn't even know that was a role. Pretty much, uh, I'm like backing up footage from my cards while they're shooting on like a uh, C500. I've never done that before. So like certain things are just like, wow, that's somebody's just like, you know, role. It really, oh, it really just open your eye to like new things that you never thought about. And it's like, that's the way and the route that you want to go. That's probably the biggest regret that I have is not working for somebody bigger than me before I start. Started. yeah that's my regret as well so okay so even now just yeah go find some places where i could like contract myself out or how old are you or, i'm 28 oh you're seven dude you're still young like i mean i started <laughs> i started i started i picked up a camera when i was 28 like when i like i did stuff like here and there like i like i like taking photos mm-hmm. but i was like nothing serious i think i was 27 when i like I was like, oh shit, photo is something I really actually enjoy doing. I bought the camera when I was 28. Then I did freelance in New York City for two years until I was 30. And then when I was 30, I moved back to Florida, like moved down to my parents, like, and like started Tasca Studios. I think it was like 2016, like uh, October that like I filed like the LLC, and, like became official, but I think we started in like March. But um, being 28, dude, I would literally right now, because here's the thing, you can still, you can make some money still doing a couple of projects that you're doing i would just cut back on the all the like the script writing and look for and i also like i don't know what the day rates are for you know what they pay out in australia versus what they do in america but like for me to do this dit tech person on wednesday and thursday they're paying me 600 bucks a day which my my day rate's way more than that. I usually charge clients three thousand dollars a day just to go out and film. But like I'm getting to learn and I'm getting some cash flow because the same thing like me getting a three thousand dollar shoot day. I got to go out and shoot. I got to do the pre production. I got all these steps before I get there, right? So like yeah. you being in a position that like your monthly expenses are at two thousand dollars, I would be putting myself out there to like every single video production company in your area and just getting your foot in the door as like, hey, I either want to come in and PA if you guys need any help on sets, I want to be that guy. And eventually what happens is when they get smaller projects that they don't want to take on and they see that you work hard and you hustle, they might, they might send those to you. And like, I've done that with other people that like, I had a project that was like 1500 bucks like two or three weeks ago. And like, I just couldn't take it on. Like I gave it to one of the guys that like freelances for me. Yeah. But, but I knew that he could do it because he's like, he worked with me for a couple of times. I saw that he hustled. So like really open yourself up the opportunity especially if that's the direction that you want to move to okay that makes a lot of sense yeah classic rich dad poor dad work to learn not to earn yeah 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 all right okay i'll um i think that makes a lot of sense it's actually kind of good to have someone else tell me that because yeah i was worried about like jumping into that trap and then being trapped but no it makes a lot of sense i gotta learn from the big studios why would you be trapped i wouldn't be trapped it was a weird little thing i had in my head sort Mm -hmm. of thing i I noticed it because i took on a um job where i basically was doing casual employment 
for this mm-hmm. person. Really, I guess the issue, I just need to get that out of my head. But because it was like this alley, right? They really, and I knew I worked for them, but they really didn't like respect my time in the sense that I was there to do one day a week or something. And then because of the way they were organizing it, they needed me there for like two or three days. Mm-hmm. And like, and I wasn't really learning much. So I kind of just was having my time burnt doing a lot of menial tasks. And it wasn't like a studio. It was like this kind of ad hoc thing this guy put together. Mm-hmm. So that's just a story in my head. I'll get out of that. I just need to go find like a good studio to work for. And like, and, and I'm and I'm a reasonable guy. So yeah, I'll 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 I'll, I'll slog through shit for companies. That's yeah. not a problem. Yeah, I'm certain there's there's one company down here that they're called Hundred Films, and the guy's always doing like really dope work. I literally to this day I, I hit him up and I was like, hey Pete, I was like, you need somebody in Florida. Like I'm literally like, hey, don't forget about me. Like literally messaging him still, like, dude, like I want to come work for you for free. Let me know. You know, that kind of yeah. shit. Because like he's working with my dream clients. I want to learn how to work with those dream clients. The best way to do it. Cause like honestly, like when you start working, like today I had a meeting with a client and like we told him the project scope for like uh like for two videos gonna be between eight to twelve thousand dollars. And he's like, All right, cool. The thing is the video that I'm shooting for this client for eight to twelve thousand dollars is no different than other videos I've done for eighteen hundred dollars. I'm still gonna do the same amount of pre-production, I'm still gonna be there for eight hours, I'm still gonna have to edit a two or three minute video. Do anything that changes changed was that client but it was for me working with other bigger clients and understanding how those clients operated that Mm -hmm. allowed me to have this conversation with those clients but then also like when you work with these you know bigger agencies go look at their website start seeing because then you're like oh so this client that we work with for this company they hired them what does their website look like because that's the, then you start understanding what are these companies looking for, and then you start me, mirroring your website to look like the website to those clients that uh, are working with those companies that you possibly could be working with. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think that's gonna be my plan. Then I've got two big projects I got to finish up on. Mm-hmm. Like they're just eating up my whole time because I've overcommitted. So once I finish them, that's the, probably the next things I'll be working on, or I'll just start sending messages out out now and then i'll get back to the big projects yeah yes yeah, so no, but like what, what's your what's your client outreach like are you reaching out to clients what are you doing not particularly biggest thing was i think yeah a couple months ago i completely switched my style so i no longer do what's on my website that's uh hmm. doing more like explainer style videos can you share that with you or just drop me a link yeah to sure it? thing if you um enable share screen share i'll share something with you so this was like done in a different direction and i charged 2900 australian which is about uh, about like 2200 us i think Mm-hmm. So this is and it's a little one minute explainer and I'll just make sure I share sound and I'll, all right, here we go. PropCheck is an automated property data platform designed to help you make smart decisions now. So how does it work? Simply type in an address and our system will generate a property report and have it emailed within minutes. Find out the property's zoning, whether it's flood affected, has heritage or character protections. And yes, all of this as well, you name it. And your property is just half the equation. What's beside you affects purchasing decisions as well. Introducing context mapping included in your report. You can see your surrounding area from easement, noise, access to key infrastructure and more. And we get it, you're busy. Emails everywhere and those reports can easily get lost under the pile. To save you time, say hello to Dashboards, a centralized place for all your reports. So while your competitors do this, please hold the line. You're making informed decisions now. Prop check. Property information now. Nice. So you wrote this one? Yeah. Yeah. So I think your skill would be very, like, to me, this makes more sense for you than yep. doing production. Yeah. So are you doing more of these videos or? Well, I got another one as as well it, mm-hmm. it's, it's a bit more in between like it's, it's the person it's the actual owner of the company speaking to camera and then there's like it's three minutes that one okay so you know and obviously now looking at it like oh you know i need to like look at this as a permanent basis you know for every minute i've got to write that's going to be like three four hours of my time Mm-hmm. so you know i need to um but yeah i did a three hour one where it's him talking to camera and every now and then we have like an animation pop up to help explain it but the idea being and it made a lot of sense these videos because um i had someone say oh look you know i know some people that could pay nine to 17 grand australian for that kind of stuff so i was like oh this makes sense because basically i'm helping 
I understand technology really well and I've got a really good way of using analogy so I can help explain the complicated really simply. And that's a, and it's an obvious problem. Technology companies need to have their stuff explained in a really digestible and easy manner. So like, I don't know what the rest of your work looks like, but just from my experience, my most profitable projects I've done have been, wait, who's doing the animation for you? I did this one myself this time around. It was oh, horrible. really? Okay. Yeah. So I mean, even better, like I've hired people on Fiverr to do animations and those have been to my most profitable projects um the fact that you can write it's like i have issues like i can't write like i can't write for shit or do i steal other people's scripts and i just like change out words and things like that but if you're able to write scripts and follows you go look at fiverr and what most companies do when they do explainer videos they put a word cap on like hey it's like 30 second video it's 40 words max 60 minute video 90 words max so like spend time on fiverr and look what the really expensive people are doing and what they lay out because like for you to sit there and write three minutes worth of content without like a word limit on there like you're shooting yourself in the foot and there's a reason why fiverr and other these other companies look at that there's one that's a really good company. Okay, so this is a buddy of mine out in uh, San Francisco. And he was doing a lot of video production. And then he realized that like him being in San Francisco, the, the tech is everywhere. That he started finding people like overseas on like, you know, Russia, Ukraine, India. They're really oh, good at wow. doing animation. And he would write, he would like do the scripts itself, but he just started managing the team of uh, like virtual creators and putting these videos together. And what he was charging a client versus what, yeah. you know, the people were charging them. And the, and the good thing, what I like, love about the, these animation videos or, or things like this is that like you could be working four to 10 projects and you're just doing project manager. And that'll be like the next role. And like as you get busy, you'd bring on a virtual project manager to help you do this. So like if you have the skill to write, I'll start looking, especially, I mean, you're in uh, Australia. It's like, what's the time difference between like you and the Philippines and in India? Uh, uh, not too bad. Phil India is about, what am I? Eight hours ahead. Eight hours? Oh, okay, it's still a big difference. Okay. Same thing, like on my phone, I have like the team there. So I literally have like India. I have like all the different time zones on here. So like I know where the team is at, like waking up when you're going to bed. But so, I mean, India right now is 6.19. Yeah, so I mean, it's, I mean, it's still not bad. It's still close oh, enough. So I'm, four, I'm four hours ahead. Yeah, so like I'd spend some time finding mm. some of these after effects and people like that, that like you're able like start looking for tech companies in your area and i would focus on doing explainer videos man like and i said maybe your video work is really good and you still do a little bit of both but the more and like i was talking with chris because like chris told me he'd make a lot of money when he when they when blind made money he's like we would literally charge your client fifty two thousand dollars to do like a 15 second animation it would cost me two thousand dollars to do that animation but he's like i had the connection <laughs> to the client he's like that's how we like that's how we made like over eight million dollars a year running blind was we do projects like that he's like two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollar project it'd be like fifteen thousand dollars for us but we are the ones yeah. closer to the creatives <laughs> I don't know. That's something so, I would look at. Yeah, absolutely. I think it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, it, was, it was honestly it was the easiest sell, which was the biggest sell for me. Like I charged more than I've ever charged for those videos mm -hmm. and they didn't really question it. Well, like they did question it a bit. Like I think I, I asked for a bit more than they were expecting, but mm -hmm. they really didn't didn't bother them. They went, okay, yeah, fair enough. Here you go. How did you so tell them the price? I had uh, so for the prop check one you just saw there, I had Vast. We talked a bit and said like, what do you need? He's like, oh yeah, I just need a video to like really help explain this app I'm building. Mm -hmm. And um, what we did, and so I think we sat down for the first thirty minutes, and I just covered off all the beats so i was like this is all right so if i can cover all these things this is what you'd like yep and he's like okay what kind of price would we be looking at and i went i said oh we'll probably be looking somewhere between two and a half to three and a half grand and he went mm -hmm. oh i was expecting around that two grand mark but he's like oh, okay well look i'll write you up a little proposal so you can see what you're paying for and then i sent him a quote for 2900 and he went yep that's great something that i've that i've uh learned as well is when you give these quotes to them like when you're talking to them verbally always say the higher number first and then when you present them a quote give um give them three pricing options so let me sh i'll show you uh i actually just sent this to another one of my uh coaching students so literally i was like this is what i sent to a client and uh we closed them at the twelve thousand. but i was like hey lydia here's our i don't send proposal i like i hate i do not put together proposals for clients but literally you're just like 
Hey Lydia, here's our unofficial proposal. I sent a formal one once we come to terms. I provided three pricing options. Option three includes an additional video uh, since we'll be interviewing your CEO. You can always take advantage of the opportunity to create something longer, a delivery website similar to the one provided. So like, you know, option one, 4,500. Option two, and I put a price range because we did a little bit of animation. And then the same thing mm -hmm. for option three, you know, depending on what you need, different scope. And they're like, yeah, let's go to price three. And I was like, I should have charged way more money because if they're jumping on price three, I'm like, I was way lower than what they were expecting. But yeah. the good thing about when you provide them a three price and option is if they're shopping against other people and the other people only provides them one price and option, it makes it really hard for them to compare them against you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that makes a lot of sense. It, it does go a little bit more work in putting together or something like that. But you'd be like, hey, more custom animation. Like you can figure it out from what it would be, but give them a three price and option next time. Because then our, our biggest project, which I think is for like an animated, is even an animated video. It was like I bought footage off pond five and threw some like text over it and it was like sixteen thousand dollars for this like, attorney and i was like i need more of these videos because it was so easy like i didn't have to do production like i didn't leave my house you know what i mean i like that, shooting that videos yeah like not having to leave your house and you just make some money and the best part's when you hire somebody to do it for you and then like mm. then you really like then the like shit really starts opening up for you that you're like, wow, how can I start doing more of these? Yeah, that's the big one there. Yeah, I think, and I think that's really like the biggest struggle I had with them. I, I was planning on hiring animators, mm -hmm. uh, but I think after like four or five, uh, four or five hours shopping around on Fiverr, I just couldn't find an animator who would give me the After Effects file. Oh, I, I, I make that like, at, so like when I go to Fiverr and I'm like looking at people, that's part of like when I hit them up, normally this is how you go on Fiverr. I go on Fiverr, I'll send them a link of the video. I'm like, hey, I'm looking to create a third second video similar to this and then and with other effects a little bit different but like most of what i've done is like you know the 2d animation like people walking you know that kind of shit and um and for the most part like i wouldn't i wouldn't need a uh, project file because they're probably using some software that i don't have but with after effects when i when I ask them for the bid or I tell them like, hey, give me a quote and price on this. I'm like, as part of this price, I need all the assets. Give me a price mm -hmm. on that. So like right now, if I was you, I'd be finding a couple of the videos that you've done or other projects that you want to be um, like, that you want to be doing. Get links to those, go to Fiverr and start asking people for quotes. So when the project comes mm -hmm. up, you're going to be ready. And then Fiverr has like, you can heart and you can create lists. I have like a bunch of different lists for like storyboard artists, for um, animators, mm -hmm. visual composers, or start working on creating those lists so when the projects do come you're not spending a day trying to put the team together you at least have some people that you can go to i, I really love that i think that's probably one of the big things to take away as well is just like having that freedom to hire multiple people to like find the best bit because then in a sense they're also they're paying you to get it get the best solution you know so that i like that a lot and i think um it was good to hear you say that um you liked the idea of the animated explainers mm -hmm. because there's a lot of because yeah, I because I can do the writing it, it really works out well there. Oh, by the way, if, uh, I I didn't know how to write, so if you ever need a, a person to teach people how to write, I know okay. a guy who's he's 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 absolutely been god changing. Like I didn't actually I thought I couldn't write like mm -hmm. at all. Like I thought I was proper mentally challenged in writing. Um, <laughs> putting it in the PG way. And they, um, but no, like I, it, like it took me about half a year of like mm -hmm. just on and off every now and then, but he, he taught me how to like write for script writing for videos. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, it's something that I would be interested in, but at this point, like I want to yeah. hire people that are better than me. Like, yeah, exactly. Like I'd rather hire someone like you to write my videos for me. So like, I want to work on the next so I want to like the biggest thing right now that I'm working on is constant cash flow for my business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And especially okay. like look up companies. So like even so another client of mine that uh, I've been working with for a really long time, he he sells like luxury used cars. We're doing an animated video for him for um to explain the process of like what is it like? what is it like to sell them your luxury car? Cause like he buys cars from like, cause like the inventory with like everything that's happening. Like, I don't know how the, the car inventory is in Australia, but like in America, like there's not enough cars for people to buy. So like used cars are like double the price right now. So he's looking to buy cars cause he doesn't have inventory to sell. So versus us shooting a video, he's like, Hey, how much should it be to make like animated video? I was like, Oh, it was like 1800 bucks. I could do like a 2d. I was like, I gave him a three price and options. He went with the middle one. And if you look at Apple, go to the app website, Apple does the exact same thing. Here's your base 
base model. Here's one that has some pretty good shit. And then here's the max one. You probably don't need it, but like it has everything that you might ever need. Most people end up going with the middle option. And the same thing, he was like, yeah, we could do 1800 bucks. It's $300 for me to do the whole project. I had, I got this guy that I've used on Fiverr before to write scripts. He was uh, like 75 bucks. And then the animator was 225. And my sister coordinated everything for me too, which has been better. Cause like having her help me do a lot of the stuff, like, you know, you've been in contact with her, like her rescheduling, like freeing up my time. So like, what can I do as an entrepreneur to make my business better? So like this whole weekend I was in Miami, like trying to learn from Christo. Like I was going to these conferences, trying to learn and be better versus me being home editing the project. You know what I mean? Like what's, yeah. what's going to be the most valuable for my business. So like at this point, like I'd rather spend the money, hire people that are better than me so I can keep learning and keep growing the business and really be able to take things to the next level. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and I think that's the next stage I'm going to go. I think you have helped me a lot figure out how I'm supposed to be freeing up my time, just the practical elements of that. That's good to see the examples of what you use there. So thanks mm -hmm. for that. Yeah, man, but that's the thing. It's like, you got to figure out, and Chris told me this a lot too, because like in the beginning, I was like, what do I do with my free time? And he's like, listen, if you're going to hire people to do the work for you, but in your free time, if you're going to do nothing with your free time to buy your time back he's like then don't hire those people like, if you're gonna do the work then do the work but he's like hire people like if you look at the rich rich rather spend their money than spend their time right like you want like yeah. you can buy back you never buy back time he's like yeah. work on doing that so i was like i was like you're true because like before in the, even in the beginning like i had a couple of big projects and then like I hired people to do the project. And then on my free time, I was doing nothing. I was like, like I wasn't moving the business forward. And that was one of those things. I was like, wow, I really need to change that. Or like, I'm not going to grow. So as long as like, if you are going to do that, make sure that you're going to be utilizing your time, right? And you know what you're going to be doing. Oh, like, honestly, the first things I'll be working on is just contacting more clients if I had more time. But fix your website, man. It's like, it's one of those yeah. things that like, if your website doesn't, if you're contacting clients and your website, it, and it's, it's a different thing when a client comes to you and it, like they've seen like with the, this app that you just showed me, if another, you know, friend of his gives you a reference, it's a whole, the whole process is a lot different. Uh, it's, it's also a lot easier. And that, and that explains like why I've only been getting word of mouth, you yeah. know? So, um, and I know, cause I know probably about every one week, every once a week, I'll have someone pop on my website that's mm -hmm. new. And the, that's obviously a lost opportunity every time. Yeah, so definitely, I'll, I'll, definitely I'll, work on that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll just get that designed and fixed up. Well, probably what, where would I go to? Where would you go if you're looking for someone to fix up a website cheap? Fiverr again or? Fiverr, it, it all comes down. I'll, I'll look into what is, how much that you want to spend. But for me to, if I was going to, hire somebody to redo my website all depends on what like it comes down like first you gotta figure out how much do i want to spend to work on my, my website um like with me i just had somebody redo my website on webflow initially first i went to and upwork is another great resource too i don't know if you're familiar with upwork fiber yeah. but a little bit better so like i've had people that i've hired on upwork to do some like optimization and, and like build different sites and but this last one with like i hired somebody initially on upwork to do my site and then i had a buddy of mine that's like a web flip designer come in and like fix up a bunch of things on there on that like i just wanted i wanted to work with somebody that i was gonna just be able to like just get work done with but i'll probably look at upwork to get the site started and then you know another good option if you're just starting out dude um Squarespace is super easy to use. Like yeah. I'm a huge, like I think I used Squarespace for the first like four years of my business. It wasn't until uh, like my area got way more competitive that like there's different factors into like ranking a website. And the one that really affected us was like the speed because we were uploading so many videos and I was trying to make my, my website very content heavy that like other websites using like uh, WordPress, which is like a little bit faster, I was losing ranking to them. But ever since then, of course, as soon as I left Squarespace, Squarespace launched 7.0 or 7.1, which now they're fast. But at that time, I already spent money building Webflow. So I, like, I wasn't turning back. But like, you can find somebody to build you a decent website in Squarespace. That'd be very easy for you to go in there and make changes. Like I, I used to hate in the beginning, like at other clients that I worked with, that they hired people on, you know, developers overseas to work in WordPress site. And like for you to have to look up a hex code to change the color or something, like I was like, dude, that's ridiculous. I was like, I don't have time for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, that's no, I fucking hate WordPress. <laughs> yeah. So like I'd start off, I'd go to Upwork and be like, hey, I'm looking for somebody to build me a website. My budget's a thousand bucks. You're gonna get leads. You know what I mean? 
and then it yeah. just it's spreading through them but at least figure out where what, what is it that you want to spend for it but i think that yeah. that'd be definitely priority number one for your website it, like the number one priority for your, your website so you can start really outreaching to people and start showing some of this new work that you've been doing yeah absolutely and what, what did you think of the video personally as well like did you the like animation it? video yeah, yeah. I, would, I, would, I would hire you to do more stuff like that like when i saw that i was like oh this makes way more sense so like and it's and not everybody does animation videos, right? Which I think makes it very, and like, like so it all depends on which way that you want to go. And, and mm -hmm. I think the beginning, you can do a little bit of both. You can even incorporate two into a certain business, but really start looking at, um, and I don't know what your video strategy is for clients, but like you have to look into the way of like, how is this video going to benefit my clients? Because I've seen, even in the beginning, I've been guilty of this. I shot videos for clients just to shoot videos. And these videos did not align with their goals whatsoever. So now yeah. like when I shoot a video for a client, and I'm like, what is what is it that we're trying to achieve here? I want to make sure that I'm giving you the best video. Um, yeah. so like having an understanding of that, I think is you know very important. But like, oh, yeah. I'd yeah. be shooting, I'd be making more of those. Like the fact that you can write, I'd be making more of those. Okay, great. Okay, I'm definitely gonna do that then. So because I, I can stick to the writing for now, and eventually I'll probably process it. But I've got mm -hmm. a very, it's, I call it my 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 motto is and this is the new business motto is script to screen with a pinch of awesome. Mm -hmm. and uh so that's um yeah all right cool that, that should be that should be the header of your website header of that yeah i just thought of that last week so um yeah that's a big one there and um oh okay, yeah fix the website contact clients get it uploaded change that styling to like the new venture i'm going towards look yeah and if and uh, you know honestly actually i'll say this if you ever you look like someone i'd like to work for so whether that's a volunteer or if it's a project thing man yeah let me know about that because i'd love to like learn more sort of stuff for sure so, oh yeah. do you have anyone that helps you with shoots or you work somebody yourself for the shoots yeah uh right now i usually film by myself because mm -hmm. like a videographer like the decent ones in brisbane they're about nine to a twelve hundred dollars a day okay so uh, um, it sounds like you need to start charging like three to five thousand dollars for project because like yeah. that's another thing too i've hired people that are better than me for because here's the thing all you need is one really good project you need three good projects in your website to be able to get better clients so like when i start budgeting out clients now like my day rate for a very long time i think was like 2200 it was like 1800 dollars for the day and i did like 900 for a half day but i wasn't I, I wasn't able to bring on the best people to do the job or like i'd have to ask like friends like hey versus 150 an hour can you do 100 can you, mm. can you do 50 versus 75 and there's only so much of that that you could do before people kind of get burned out of, out of it so like i really took a look i'm like okay for me to bring the best producer that i could work with how much is that going to cost okay she's 150 for me to bring a dp that really likes what he's doing how much is it going to cost it's going to be 800 so i raise my price to be able to give the clients the best possible thing but here's the other thing that three pricing option for those clients that's another reason so like I also have different tier people that I will use in different projects. And if they yeah. pay for the best, I'm going to bring the best for that project to them, you know, but like get some people in your radar that like you could possibly start working with. And when you start pitching clients, you start thinking of like, how much is it going to cost for me to bring a team in to do this for me? So I, I don't even have to do any of the work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, okay. Sweet. That makes a lot of sense. I'll be doing that ASAP. Anything else in your mind? Any questions? No, I think you covered everything for now. And it's, I'm going to use a saying I said at the beginning, I just don't know what I don't know. Um, yeah. So my next step is fix the website, work for businesses. Uh, the other thing coming off my head there is like when I say, ask companies if I can volunteer or work for them. Uh, maybe it's a story in my head. Like, do you think they're going to be fearful of like, oh, but they're teaching the competition? It depends when like, I, there's plenty of young kids and other people that I reach out to that like, I don't see them as a competition. Some people might see you as a competition and other people like just need good people to work for them. So like, it comes down to like, you know, with this other guy, when I hit them up, I was just like, listen, dude, I love what you're doing. Uh, I love the projects that I see you working on. I'll love to be able to learn more from you. I'm literally willing to come freaking PA, go out on coffee runs, pick up garbage on set, like whatever I could do to help you. Like I just want to extend that for you. Like I just want to work for free and learn. Yeah. That's it. You know what I mean? And I've gotten like some good that. opportunities from that. Fun. Yeah. Just be like, Hey, I'm looking to just learn and work from free. Um, I'm just, I'm getting started. Um, you know, I, I love what you guys are doing. I love what you guys are about and I'll just have to connect. Awesome. Okay, great. That's yeah, being, right, being humble gets you really far. Thank you. That was good. I think I'm, look, I'm really covered on everything there, Rodrigo. This, this was awesome. That was amazing. It was good to just get some insights. It was actually just quite relieving to hear from someone running a business, like where they think things should go. It just, it helps settle everything in the head a bit. Awesome, man. I'm glad to hear that. Mm, thank you.
for sure. All right. So um, I'll get, I'll, uh, when we get off the call, I'll let it uh, finish saving to my computer and then uh, I'll upload it to uh, Dropbox and send it to you. And then I'm also going to send you uh, my uh, a code for you to be able to download my contracts from my website for you to be able yeah. to start using them. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. And then there's like the Notion template as well. Yep. And... Yep. I have that on here. Oh, yeah, there's, uh, awesome. I actually wrote too many notes. You needed a Notion template and what else? There was a Notion um, and there was one other thing in there. If I can't remember, I can always look back through the recording anyway and I let you know. <laughs> oh, my chicken travel. This is something focused to send. Was it question app or contract? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Question your contractors. Correct. All right. Cool, bro. All right, man. Thanks so much for your time. All right. Thanks so much. Bye. All right, bye.